Hey guys, it's Kate and I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to do another watercolor landscape, so I hope you'll get your paints and supplies out and join along with me. I'm working on New York Central cotton paper. It's five by seven and the Mei Liang watercolor palette and my quill brush. And I'm using a photo reference that I found on out at uh, unsplash.com and it's a free download so I'm going to leave a link in the description below in case you'd like to download it and follow along. But I started out with a very very light pencil sketch and it just is there to kind of give me an idea of where the hills are and my skyline is so that way when I'm wetting the paper like I did here for the sky I can make sure I'm not um, going to just kind of go all over the page. I want to make sure I get a clean water line. So I did that for this painting. And this is going to be kind of an abstracted landscape when I'm done with it. But I've been really loving practicing skies and trying not to overwork watercolor also. I tend to do that when I'm working on representational art. And so these exercises are really good practice for me too to try to improve that. So for the sky I started off with the lightest first and added in those golden colors that you can see in the reference photo followed by some of that pink that's around it. And for my first layer, I'm just kind of going easy and light with the paint. And I'm going to put in the little, well, I'd say landmarks, but it's not land, it's sky. Let's say sky marks. <laughs> put them in where they go, and that way it'll give me a good reference point for when I add my second layer and the darker clouds on top. I really wanted to try to get the sky right um, I love how the light comes through the clouds in the photo, and that to me is the best part of the picture. And then you've got some kind of dark landscape below. And so what I'm doing here is I'm starting on the, the lowest hills first, or the closest ones to you if you were looking at the scene. I'm just trying to give my sky a chance to dry so that I can continue working on the painting but my colors won't bleed together because I want to keep that sharp line if I can. And so between coats I'll try to let things dry as well although there were a couple of times I'll say impatience got the best of me and I accidentally went over some areas but I ended up fixing those and ended up really happy with how the painting turned out. So looking at the photo, I saw some, some yellows and some browns in that um, front hilly part. So I'm trying to add those. And I'm also throwing in a little bit of Payne's Gray to cool it. Um, I, you know, when you're looking at landscapes, usually the further something is away, the cooler the colors. And shadows are cool colors. And so while the landscape closest to you would be warmer colors like yellows and greens and things, um, it's also sort of in shadow. So I added a little bit of Payne's Gray in there just to cool it down slightly. And then I'm going to go with very much cooler colors when I go into the, the second set of hills that are further away. But for now, I'm kind of going back into the sky area since it's had a chance to dry. And I am working on getting those clouds. And so if you look at the picture, there are some clouds that are coming in front of where the sunset is. And they're very dark and almost like a silhouette against the rest of the sunset sky. So I'm trying to capture that here. And I'm being a little bit more free with some of the other cloud locations, just uh, getting the idea of them versus perfect in every detail. <laughs> and 
And so I'm going around and I'm just trying to slowly add color, let some of it kind of bleed out where, you know, the clouds are looking a little bit more wispy. And so I'm adding water around the edges. And then I'm also just dropping in some extra dark color to darken up some of those more shadowy spots in the clouds. And I also had an oopsie, but if you catch it fast enough, you can blot it up with paper towel. So I'm going in with some more darker tones and some cooler colors toward the right. And I'm also kind of blending it out with a damp brush just to get it a little bit softened. But I like some of those harder edges too. And I also apologize if you can hear traffic in the background. I have quite a bit of activity on the highway outside the house today. So I try to remove as much as I can in post-production, but I, uh, can't seem to ever remove all of it. So um, hopefully you find traffic noises very relaxing. <laughs> So I'm just going through finishing up some of the sky areas and I'm kind of wiping away some parts where I want it to be lighter and adding in some extra dark colors. But when you have the wetness, sometimes it will just keep on kind of spreading out. So it's sometimes hard to get a very dark value where you want it. So I use some pretty concentrated paint here to just kind of make sure I get those spots in there that I want to be a lot deeper. And I'm going to give that a minute to sit and see how it kind of spreads out and settles. But some of those hard spots in the middle there I didn't really want to keep. So I do end up going back to work on those a little bit. And I also want to blot back that one bright spot closer to the right side. So now is when I'm going in to work on those hills and I'm using primarily Payne's Gray mixed with some blue to um, just get it a little bit a little bit warmed up but letting it kind of blend downward into the grass below and have kind of a darker top. And I really like that look in the landscape. And then I'm going to also do some colors to the right side. And I'm trying to break up my work so that I don't have a lot of bleeding together. So for this one, I'm adding a little bit more green into it and making that a nice rich green but still cool color. And if you notice on the reference photo you'll see a little house and maybe a barn and I was sort of on the fence throughout this painting whether or not I wanted to keep it. So you'll see I paint over the area and then I scrub it out so I can paint the house and barn <laughs> and then I paint over it again so um, we do end up adding those as you probably saw in the thumbnail but it was a very much back and forth during the painting but that's where you get that creative license if you're going to follow a picture, you don't necessarily have to put everything in it. You, as the artist, get to decide where you want the focus to be. 
for me, it was the sky, but I really did like having that little accent of the house and barn there. So you'll see me here with my little scrubby brush, and I just used a damp brush and kind of scrubbed some of that away and um, blotted it on my paper towel so that I would have a little spot kind of saved for the house and barn. And also, since the house was a lighter color, um, it, it would be kind of marking that spot in that darker background. So I'm going back into the Payne's Gray mixture with some green and I'm adding in that final hill. And this is the first coat and so I'll be going back in to darken up some things later and also add some more color to the foreground. Um, to deepen up those greens in the front. But right now I'm just finishing up blocking in my different areas and putting in those bushes and shrubs and distant trees on there and just going through with my brush giving the hint of the little tree blobs. That's what we'll call them today. <laughs> And this is where I got a little bit ahead of myself just because the the trees you can see are kind of bleeding a little bit into that middle hill and it didn't actually matter and you know in some cases you might really like that effect because it can add some texture. So I, I just need to I think do better and figure out you know what effects I really want and that's going to determine how I use that water and whether or not I paint on a dry surface or a wet surface. So for this one it bled a little bit more than I wanted but I it ended up not being a problem because I just kind of went over it again later but I probably could have saved myself extra layers if I had had more patience in the beginning. So that was a learning moment for me with this painting. I'm just trying to do too much while it's wet. So I'm tightening up that top angle in the left side mountain because that one had also done a little bit of blending with the sky. So I'm just kind of fixing up that top but again, I'm just working a little bit too wet. So some of those crisp edges I end up losing and have to redo. But sometimes that's just the effect that you want. So it really just depends on what your goal is as the painter. For me, I did want some more crisp edges. So I will have to wait more next time and just make sure to keep in mind where my wet edges are. So I am kind of fixing that up right now, adding some color. And if you look at the reference photo, there's some kind of brown streakiness from dirt, I think, going down through the grass. So I'm adding that as well. I'm just really having fun with that foreground, adding in some different colors and and. Um, textures and values so and now I'm going to add some more of that lighter green to the center and keep some of the yellow in there that you can see in the photo So I knew then I needed to allow it to dry and be patient <laughs> and then I could go in with another layer on some dry paper and that worked out much better for me. 
So I went in and kind of redefined those edges again and I'm adding in some darker colors to those mountains. That way they can really pop and contrast against the sky. I really wanted to pump up the contrast as much as I could with the clouds and the mountains against the sky. And I will go in and add a little bit more of that red color too that pops so much in the photo. Although I think I still could have made it a bit darker. And it's always something I can kind of go back and revisit too. One of the things I really found that I love with this paper is that it takes re-wetting and more layers like a champ. <laughs> and as you can see, even though I'm kind of working and reworking spots, there really isn't a lot of that cauliflower effect going on, except uh, kind of slightly over there on the left, which I end up painting over anyway. But this paper takes layering really well. And it's that uh, New York Central paper. I get it at Jerry's Artorama. I like using the B paper too. This paper is also 100% cotton, but I really like experimenting with different papers. And actually, I just ordered a new paper on Amazon that probably when it comes in, I will do um, an unboxing of sorts and a test. And I might end up doing a video coming up soon comparing different papers too. I've been trying some different things lately. I've got a Fluid 100 block and I've got this New York Central paper. I have the B paper that I use and also a couple of cellulose papers, which I have um, been having a lot of fun with Artist Loft paper, which is a very low cost cellulose paper from Michaels, but I've actually been enjoying playing with it and I, I think I like it better than Canson. It does have some quirks to it, but if you treat it a little bit differently and kind of go into it with that expectation, you can have a lot of fun with that paper. So I've gone through a couple of pads now, <laughs> just having some fun, and some of those have ended up in videos on YouTube, but it it's fun to play with different types of supplies and kind of find out the the quirks with each one and what you need to do a little bit differently and how it performs with different paints. So I'm going back in. I added some more of that red and yellow to the sky and I'm deepening up a few of those clouds more and warming up that grass in the middle a bit too with some more yellow ochre in my green mixture. And once again, you can see my house and barn spot disappeared, even though I scrubbed out the paint earlier. So I'll be adding that back in. And I'm starting to get a little bit into the home stretch now. So I'm putting in some final colors where I think it needs to be a little bit more saturated. And then because I had painted over my scrubbed out spot, I ended up getting some just plain white gouache and I mixed it with a little bit of my watercolor in my palette to tone it. And since white gouache is opaque, I was just able to paint right over the underpainting below. And so I'm doing just a very simple kind of blobby outbuilding set just to let you know something's there on the hillside but it's not detailed it's just very abstracted and I love working with the gouache I got just a tube of white and it's nice to have on hand if you don't want to use masking fluid or um, if you don't want to scrub off paint you know, to kind of block in a place or try to avoid areas, gouache is another option. If you don't have white gouache, you can certainly add acrylic paint to this. There's nothing that says you can't, just as long as you keep in mind that it will be permanent when it dries, unlike gouache or watercolor. So just be sure it is where you want it to be, because it's not moving afterward. 
So I'm trying to add just a couple little dots to kind of represent windows and put a couple of shadows on the buildings. And then I was trying to add kind of a barn door to the front and it was hard to get some dark color on there. It just kind of kept um, dispersing, I guess. And so I got it as dark as I could and then I went back in with some plain darker watercolor to put a little bit of shadows around the buildings and then draw that out. I ended up getting my bigger brush to just soak up more of that paint and spread it faster. And then last but not least, I am going back in again to re-add all those bushes and trees and just really make them very dark. And I really love how that brown and the other paint strokes kind of left a texture in that front hill. And I love how the sky pops. I really loved how the clouds turned out there. And I think that's where I spent most of my concentration, if not most of my time. But this painting was so much fun to do. And it's a really good practice to, well, practice your brushwork, but also just to have fun with your colors, try mixing your colors and matching and just working on something that you think is beautiful and giving it your own interpretation. But I hope you join along with me for this and painted in the best way that you know how <laughs> and in your own style. And I hope you really enjoyed this video and you go get that uh, picture downloaded so you can use it yourself. Thank you so much for watching today and until next time, keep creating and I'll see you soon.